Hello, good evening everyone. Thank you for staying to the very end of this concert. Uh, we have been listening until now to the newest trends in composition, and now we have the opportunity to listen to a music tradition that already has more than 200 years of history. Um, I would like to thank the organizers of the concert, especially to Professor Jeff Huang for inviting the National Ku Huang Opera Company to come here today and giving us the opportunity to enjoy this music tradition. And of course, also thank Mr. Wang Yijiao, the director of the company, for accepting this invitation. Uh, we prepared uh, a demonstration of the more important concerts of Jing Qiu, of this Beijing opera, so that you can enjoy better uh, the performance of, uh, of the company. But since we are running a little bit late, so we'll, we'll do the shortened version of it, and we'll just explain three important concepts of this kind of music, so you can enjoy better the, the, the performance afterwards. So, uh, I'll jump just uh, to it. Um, Beijing, Beijing opera music uh, uh, is defined by Chinese musicology as a um, a system of uh, metrical patterns transformations. Uh, what does this mean? So, traditionally, a whole play was set to one single mode. Uh, this mode would convey the, let's say, um, a, emotional atmosphere of the play. So in order to deliver uh, more specific uh, emotions, uh, they, would they would use some, a set of predefined labeled metrical patterns. So uh, these patterns uh, are defined by a meter and a tempo range, and they express this specific emotion. Uh, I will ask uh, one of the actors, uh, told the eye, uh, to perform for us Three excerpts from three different are, from, from three different areas, uh, each of them in a different panche, in a different metrical pattern. So you can appreciate the differences of, of these of these uh, patterns. Um, yes, uh, I will have to say that uh, the, the two actresses we have today here with us, uh, they, they are specialized in different role types. Uh, so the actress uh, Tai Xinyi is specialized in tang. This role type is specialized in portraying female characters. And the, the actor thought the eye is a laotian, a role type that specialized in portraying uh, male characters. The fact that she's an actress, that, that is not a, 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 cons a problem for per performing uh, male characters, since it is not the gender or the age of the actor what creates or builds the character in a scene. Uh, the character is built through a set of conventions uh, that attain every aspect of, uh, of the performance, uh, from makeup and, um, and costumes to the way of working, the way of, move, of moving on stage, the way of speaking, and of course the way of singing. So she will sing for us these three areas, these three excerpts from three different areas, accompanied by the Jinghu, which is uh, the main accompanying instrument uh, performed by Zhao Lujia, and also by the drummer, by Liu um, Yukun that would be setting the tempo. Please pay attention to the instrument he holds in the left hand, the, the band, these clappers, because he will mark him the, the tempo with it. So, uh, in first place, we will have an excerpt from an area in, in this metrical pattern called Yuan Ban. This pattern is in a 2-4 meter, and a moderate tempo, and this used to convey a rather unemotional uh, kind of feeling just for telling stories, just for relate, narrating facts. Um, okay, so... So this was a, a pattern for just narrating facts, for an, an, an emotional kind of feeling. So when the actor wants to express some inner emotions, some deep thoughts, it, 
she or he will change the, the, the metrical patterns. Uh, he will use a, a, a pattern called Manpan, which is in 4-4 four, four meter and in a very slow tempo. Uh, the mode is still the same, so the overall emotional atmosphere is the same, and that means that also the, the melodic material is theoretically the same, it's only the, the metrical pattern that changes, and with that, the different emotion is, is expressed. You notice from with the arm that the tempo was much slower than the other. Although the instrument is playing, it seems like it's playing faster, but the tempo is slower, and with that is expressing an inner emotion, a, 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 an introspective kind of, of expression. So now we're going to sing in the other range a very fast uh, metrical pattern in one four that is called kuaipan, that is used for expressing agitation, nervousness, like anger or, or fear. Um, two lines of in Kwaipan, it's a very fast pattern to spread this kind of agitation. So, the, 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 thank you. So, the, 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 the play we're going to listen today is going to be in this same mode, and the way of expressing different emotions is by changing these metrical patterns, and, and this is the basic structure of, of Beijing Opera. So, the music might sound somehow similar, but this because the, the main expressive resource is the metrical patterns. Uh, I'm just going to introduce the instrumental ensemble. Uh, this is a very traditional format of the uh, instrumental ensemble in, in Beijing Opera. In fact, it's, it's lacking one instrument, uh, a, a, a lute, but this is very traditional uh, format. Uh, nowadays, you've, you will find new instruments added to the me me melodic parts, like both Chinese and Western, but this is how it was the, the setup traditionally. So, the ensemble is div divided in two parts. Uh, we have the melodic part, which in Chinese is called Wencha, which literally, literally means uh, civil section. And then we have the percussion section, uh, called in Chinese Wu Chang, the martial or military section. So the lead instrument in the, in the, in the um, Wencha, in the civil section, is the Jinghu, which is the one has, that has been accompanying the, the voice until now. So the way he accompanies the voice is by playing the same melody. Uh, it's just that he adds different ornamentations uh, proper to the instrument, uh, in resulting in this uh, characteristic heterophonic texture. Uh, in order to demonstrate the, the relationship between the instrument and the voice, I'm, I'm going to request uh, our, our TAM uh, performance, uh, Tai Singi, uh, to sing a line a cappella, and, and, and next let the, 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 the Jinghu performer to play the same line in, in the accompaniment, so you can appreciate the relationship between the, the, these two lines.
So the melody we saw, we, we, we just listened in the accompanying instrument, is in concept the same melody that she sang. But as you, as you notice, he added a lot of ornamentation that, that make the, the, it distinctive. Uh, we're going to add now to, to, the, to that melody the other two instruments in the melodic section. We have here uh, an instrument very similar to the Erhu that we just listened in, in the concert, but it's a different one. It's called Ching Erhu. This Ching comes from the Chinese name of Beijing Opera, Ching Chu, and has done small differences to make it more suitable to this kind of music, especially in the bowing technique. And then we have this lute, this black instrument called Yue Qin, uh, that literally meaning uh, moon lute. Uh, so now they're going to play the same accompanying melody, the three together, so you can, you can appreciate the relationship between the instruments. Characteristic texture of the accompaniment. Now, uh, the, the four performers will will perform the same line again, all together, to to to, to appreciate how it's the result of the of the full ensemble. how the melodic part of the ensemble works in relationship with the, with the melody. And now the, we have the percussion section here. They have a very important role in Beijing opera. As I said before, rhythm, metal is the, the, the more important part for the expression of the motions. Uh, the lead instrument in this section is, is the drama. Um, uh, he's in fact the, 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 the leader of the whole instrumental example, and I would say the leader of the whole performance, because he's signaling all the structural points of the performance, not only in the music, but also in, in, but also in the acting. Um, uh, to that aim, the percussion section has a very interesting resource, which is a set of predefined labeled percussion patterns. Uh, they, they use these patterns for signaling the start of the opera, the end of the opera, the start of, of, of an aria, to accompany actors' movement on scene, especially in battle, in battle scenes, and with that also establishing the overall atmosphere of, of the scene. Interest Interestingly, it's very interesting to know that these patterns are led by a, a set of string syllables. They memorize these syllables that are chosen uh, by, for, for its phonetic resemblance of the sounds they are representing. And they memorize that, and with that, they, they can reproduce these labeled predefined percussion patterns on the scene. I just, we, are, we are going to demonstrate one of these uh, percussion patterns. Uh, this is one called Duotro that is used for introducing areas in a very in, in fast tempi. This pattern is learned in this way. So what does this syllable mean? The, the first two is long tong. And then we have ta. Next we have And then tang. We have te and also pu. And with these syllables, all the performers memorize this pattern and they know when, when the pattern is played, when they have to play. So let's listen to the pattern uh, in, in, in performed by the whole orchestra. It, it, it is long tong ta 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 te tang te 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 tang ta pu te tang. All these repertoire patterns are learned um, and transmitted. Um, <clears throat> as I said, these patterns are used for accompanying uh, movement of the actors in, on stage. And some of these movements are not uh, defined in duration. So they have a, a change in duration. So for that, 
uh, they have a very interesting resource. They have patterns with a cell that is repeated indefinitely until the movement of the actors is finished. Uh, uh, Tothia is going to demonstrate to art a convention movement that is the entrance of the Laosheng, of the main characters on scene, accompanied by a pattern which have this repeated, uh, repeating cell uh, called Manchan Chui. We are going yeah, directly to, to, to the performance. Uh, just let me uh, say a, a, a few words about the background of the story so that you, you can understand what's going on on, on stage. So, so the yeah, is going to perform for us today uh, Yang Yenhui, which is the fourth song of a very famous family uh, in, in, in Imperial China in the Song Dynasty, the Yang family. This family is famous for being a family of warriors. All of them were very brave warriors, very loyal to the Song Dynasty. At that time, uh, the Song Dynasty was uh, in war with the northern kingdom of Liao. In one occasion, the northern emperor uh, summoned the Chinese emperor to a meeting, and the brothers of the Yang family, the brothers of Yang Yonghui, uh, suspected that that would be a trap. So they decided to go instead of the emperor themselves, uh, having the eldest brother disguised as the emperor. And of course, it was a trap, and most of the brothers died, but they still had time to kill the northern emperor. Uh, but uh, Yang Yanghui uh, could escape from the situation and flew to the northern kingdom, to the enemy's kingdom, and he was uh, trapped there. He was uh, taken prisoner. Um, however, when the uh, Empress Dowager saw this uh, very handsome, very brave warrior, not only didn't uh, sentence him to death, but married him to his, to his daughter, to the princess, to the so, so in, uh, in, in, in the translation of the name is uh, Iron Mirror Princess, now today performed by Tai Xinyi, uh, the town performer. So the story of this opera happens 15 years after this event, uh, when Yang Yehue gets to know that the Song Emperor, the, the Chinese Emperor, is sending troops to the north border to engage in battle again with the northern uh, kingdom. Uh, and he knows that his mother, from whom he hasn't heard, uh, heard a word from for the last 15 years, is, al is also coming in, in, in these troops. So he wants to go to the border to visit his mother uh, again. Uh, the problem is, for that, he will need to get an imperial insignia, a, 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 a sort of permit to cross the border. And that could put at risk his situation, could, could reveal his real identity. So his wife, uh, of course, uh, noticed that is there something troubling his hus uh, her husband. Uh, and he tries, he, he, she tries to, to, to guess what's happening to him, and at the end, she guesses. She guesses correctly that his hus his, her husband, uh, from whom he doesn't have any notice of his past history or, or his familiar background, wants to reunite with his family. Of course, uh, Yang Yuhui is very scared that his wife uh, knew the, the true history of, 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 of his situation. So at, at the beginning, of, of the, before the, the start of the third we're going to listen to now, uh, the, uh, the, the, the princess has just guessed correctly what is troubling his, uh, his, uh, her husband. And Yang Yehue, very scared, is going to confess his true identity and his, famili uh, his familiar background. So, uh, we, without further delay, uh, I'll leave you with the, with the performance of the National Kukuan uh, Opera Company performing a serp and a serp from uh, Tuo Kong sitting in the palace from the opera uh, Silan Hamu, the fourth son visits his mother. 